Hello everyone and welcome back to the show. It's Merlin Fulcher speaking, it's Monday evening the 8th of June. Now, during this coronavirus COVID-19 crisis, uh, we have learned a lot about the impact that this disease has had on uh, people who are BAME, people who are in public facing low paid roles, people who are suffering from health inequality, and uh, also the impact of poor quality housing, uh, air pollution, and the kind of impact that it's having on certain people being affected much worse by this disease than other people. And what, uh, as we de delve deeper and deeper into this, what we are seeing is that this also reflects what we have in a um, structural and institutional uh, uh, racism, uh, which continues to exist and an imbalance that continues to exist uh, in our society and in other societies around the world. And as this crisis has gone on for several months now, uh, and also uh, in the United States where there was the murder of George Floyd, and uh, we have seen a lot of protests, and obviously um, also protests in the United Kingdom, uh, and uh, over the weekend um, there was the very dramatic uh, protests that took place in Bristol and Bristol is a city a uh, very historic uh, sort of west coast city in Britain uh, which grew massively uh, as a nautical and trading city and uh, the slave trade was a big part of that just as it was in places such as Liverpool, Glasgow and obviously London uh, where I'm based here in London uh, making this broadcast. Now um, so I, I witnessed this stuff just as visuals uh, which was on the television there were also images of protests in London uh, but the big image uh, which everybody was looking and discussing uh, was of uh, this man uh, whose name is Colston and um, he's being he, there was a statue of him in the centre of Bristol that had been there for a long time uh, this was quite a controversial statue. It had been there for about 120 years, uh, although this man uh, was around uh, about 250 years ago, uh, operating as a slave trader. And um, this statue uh, was had been the focus of a long-running campaign to get rid of it or to move it or to try and uh, better interpret it within the cityscape of Bristol. Um, and nothing had really been done for quite a long time. Uh, there was a protest in the city, uh, and the protest wasn't necessarily focused directly about this statue. It was to it was the Black Lives Matter campaign. It was looking at those bigger uh, institutional and structural imbalances that are existing in Britain and elsewhere. Uh, and during this protest, uh, the, the the attention turned on this statue. Uh, the statue was pulled from its mounting, dragged through the square of the city, uh, and then dropped into the harbour itself. And this this is the Bristol Harbour, the harbour uh, where uh, that kind of commerce, uh, that quite ruthless industry, which uh, caused destruction in the city uh, and elsewhere around the world, kind of moral destruction, you could say. Uh, those fruits of that industry were then brought back into the city uh, and some of that wealth came uh, through this person uh, in a very kind of unpleasant and controversial way as we would see it now. Uh, so this statue uh, was dropped into the, uh, the harbour and uh, as you can imagine there was a lot of cheering at the time uh, and in a way it's, it's very symbolic because if you think um, you know, the, obviously this water itself played that role in that kind of uh, expropriation of, of wealth, um, that kind of theft, you could say, um, this destruction of people, um, the movement of them from their home to another place uh, as a commodity in the most horrific way, um, that something like 80,000 people uh, were transported from Africa to the Americas, 19,000 people died. Uh, you couldn't imagine a statue of uh, somebody who killed 19,000 people uh, being allowed to stand without any kind of interpretation to make it clear uh, what had happened there in any other really other context. And yet it happened here in Bristol and it also happens in other cities in Britain. Um, so it seemed like it was a kind of lingering problem uh, which which hadn't really been dealt with in Bristol. Um, but it kind of goes back to this idea of the, the structural and institutional imbalances and the fact that these also relate to um, things such as local government, uh, such as policing, such as the NHS. And those all coming through in this crisis, both the health crisis, the pandemic, 
and also the sort of growing awareness of racism as a pandemic uh, which coexists and has also been heightened uh, through this uh, COVID-19 crisis. Now, um, it's very interesting um, that Bristol City Council, the mayor of Bristol, have effectively uh, approved of, of what happened there. Um, so uh, this is the scene of uh, the next day. There were lo lots of uh, banners, and these are protest banners that people had carried on the day, and they were laid ceremonially around the empty plinth. So you can see that empty plinth there. And this is an attempt to, to reinterpret um, this this statue. So up until this point, the statue had had a, a, a an inscription on it, which effectively said that um, that Colston was one of the wise elders of Bristol, that he was a, a great man, and you know this hadn't changed, and the statue had been there, it hadn't been allowed to be reinterpreted or rethought, and so here you've got the banners here, and the banners are symbolically reinterpreting this statue. Significantly, Bristol City Council this morning gathered up these banners and um, have put them, said that they're going to go into the M Shed, which is a, a big uh, museum uh, on the quayside in Bristol that has a significant and very important exhibition in there about the slave trade in Bristol. It's very, if you're ever in Bristol, that's probably the most important thing to go and see. Um, so uh, this, these, these, these banners uh, will now become part of the Museum of Bristol. And many voices today were saying that also the, um, the, the statue itself, which is in the bottom of the key, but obviously can be retrieved quite easily, um, in its defaced form uh, would make a meaningful installation in the museum and would also go some way towards educating people towards um, the, the history of Bristol, but also the history, excuse me, the history of this unique moment um, this unique moment of change that we're living through, which I've discussed many times on this show, that we're living through a time of very significant and very difficult uh, changes, um, which are also very much visual and very much to do with our built environment, but also very much to do with uh, our institutions, such as local government, such as the NHS, such as policing, uh, and how these things can move through this crisis and become more responsive to the kind of world uh, that we live in and also building a better world which is what everybody wants right now now certainly the fact that this the local government the mayor the city council etc weren't able to to deal with the issue of this statue in a satisfactory way prior to this event is a reflection of that failure of local government that kind of structural and institutional imbalance that we were discussing at the beginning of this show so i would say that very much this incident reflects um, the fact that we need a better approach to the built environment we need a much better approach to the built environment that factors in the the pressures and the changes the important changes that are happening and how those need to be reflected in our built environment now we have a lot of monuments in britain and i've discussed some of them in this show before so for example this is the albert memorial it's in Kensington Gardens in London. It's enormous. It's got lots of gold. It's got a big cross at the top. There's Albert in gold. And then there's all these kind of other images that are quite odd. It kind of shows uh, the sort of great aristocratic and upper middle class men uh, who uh, and they're all European men uh, and this idea that they are this kind of order of power and knowledge and that Albert sits above all of them. And then uh, women and people of colour are basically ornamental in this monument. And I think this is a really troubling uh, and quite, it, it really makes no sense. And it's very kind of inaccurate monument in the present age that we live in. And obviously it was built at a time of great change and it was trying to resist that change and it was trying to make a statement about how the world works. And that's a statement which isn't really true. And I would say a monument like this, I think we need we need to be able to interpret monuments like this and we possibly need to, the monuments like this need to be able to grow and to be able to, um, to tell their story in a way which is meaningful but also allows people to, to, to appreciate that they were a moment in time and that things change. So I would argue that something like this as it is right now and that people come and see this from all over the world, something like the Albert Memorial I don't think it's really complete in our present age and I think that it needs an intelligent uh, way of, a, of adding to the interpretation that's available there. And I would say broadly people in London don't really think about this really as being part of London. 
Um, certainly, I know it exists. I used to work in an office right next to it. Um, well, I still do work in an office right next to it, but I work from home mostly because of this coronavirus crisis. But I think that it could be so much more. Um, and I think that that also goes for other monuments such as this is the Victoria Monument. And again, it's an extraordinarily massive um, thing right in the centre of London. Lots of gold, lots of symbolism, uh, but it's rather stuck in time. And I think we need to uh, we need to be in a society where our built environment can grow and that it can factor in the kind of advances and the advances that we want. Uh, to be in a society without those kind of institutional and structural imbalances, right? Um, so there was some polling done today, and bearing in mind, you know, I'm, I'm doing this show just over 24 hours after the monument uh, was taken down. So there's a poll, and they, look, they, they asked people, and about 13% of people in Britain said that it was right to take down the statue, and it was right to do it in the way that it was done. That's quite a lot. 40%, so this is probably the biggest amount, were saying that it's right to get rid of the statue, but it wasn't done in the right way. And 33% uh, said that it wasn't it wasn't good to get rid of the statue, the, the statue should have stayed. Interestingly, Historic England, and Historic England's job is to protect our historic environment, have basically issued a statement this evening saying that they don't think the statue should be reinstated, um, and that they think that there needs to now be a bigger discussion about uh, statues and um, we're hearing uh, in some of the news reports this evening the mayor of London Sadiq Khan saying that um, there also needs to be a rethink of landmarks in London and I think that's that's really interesting and obviously that's a theme that I've been discussing in this program for a while as you know so so broadly speaking um, most if you take it in aggregate it would appear that most people agree this statue was wrong and there's a similar statue in London to someone called Milligan it's in East uh, the West India Quay uh, and again this is somebody who profited from the slave trade this is a landscape that was to do with the slave trade uh, the Docklands uh, the importing of sugar uh, from the West Indies where slaves were used to grow this sugar in the most appalling conditions and transported there in the most appalling conditions uh, so there's also a discussion about whether or not to get rid of this statue um, in East London. I imagine that will be part of um, Sadiq Khan's review. Um, at, obviously, the terms of that haven't yet been published. Um, but yeah, you can see here broadly, most people think it was a good idea to get rid of the statue. And I would agree. I think that it, this this statue was inappropriate. Uh, it was better in a museum. Uh, if it was to stay in that space, it needed some kind of additional interpretation to make it clear exactly what this was and, and really to add some greater meaning to it than to just let it be there in its original and intended form in the 19th century. Because we know that statues in the most part are there to glorify uh, people. But as we can also see, most people think that um, the way in which it was done wasn't right. And I would argue that Many, many statues have been torn down in these kind of moments of passion. And I think that the you we, the important thing is to learn from the moment of passion rather than to condemn it or to condone it and just say, look, what that passion says is that there's something bigger wrong with those structural institutional uh, uh, imbalances, right? And the fact that so much passion was needed to solve this issue, that clearly most people agree that this statue is wrong, that much passion was needed shows that actually what we really need is a reform in our system with the built environment. We need to have um, a system where uh, where everybody is able to have a proper discussion. And this comes to local government, right, um, to solve these problems. And this the issue of monuments is not is not new at all. So, for example, in the United Kingdom um, and in the Republic of Ireland, uh, there was a, a big discussion about monuments and uh, statues so for example in the 1960s in Dublin uh, there was a monument uh, a Nelson monument and this was destroyed um, and so it was blown up uh, and here, here's a picture of it so this is a bit like the one in Trafalgar Square and um, it, this was this was reasonably controversial at the time as well because obviously it is part of the kind of built environment heritage of a historic city of Dublin um, but then also there was a lot of passion around um, to, to recreating and to, to, to getting rid of these kind of Im images of, of imperialism uh, that existed, uh, which obviously London is still full of these images of imperialism, which not necessarily really fit with uh, possibly the direction of where we're going as a society. Uh, and certainly 
glorify some pretty appalling things in most people's opinion. Uh, and so, so in Dublin, this mon this monument to Nelson uh, was destroyed, um, and then for a long time it wasn't they were not really known what to do with this spot. And uh, there was a design competition, and Ian Ritchie Architects won a competition, and they put this spire here, uh, designed by Ian Ritchie. And this is very much a sort of thing of more recent history. Um, but I would argue, I mean it. It's good that there's something there. There's good that there's something a new monument. But I would argue, really, when you when people talk about Dublin today, they don't really think of the spire as being this amazing bit of Dublin. So I would argue that possibly, uh, I, I'd say argue that we possibly need a better a better approach to sort of re replacing these monuments. And when it comes to replacing the Colston statue in Bristol, I would argue that. Um, yeah, maybe maybe it should be a design competition, but maybe we need to think about how we make sure the panel of that design competition, how we make sure the process, how we make sure the consultation, how we make sure that, that, that really the lesson learned from this is not tearing down statues, but about that passion, about those structural and institutional imbalances and about how we need to solve them. To me, a better thing to replace the Colston statue is not just with another object, but with actually a whole new way of thinking about local government and about thinking about the policing and about thinking about uh, the NHS. And, you know, the, I've just given this example of, of Ireland and in Northern Ireland, um, you know, they, they had a police force, the Royal Ulster Constabulary, and that was disbanded um, because um, because of criticism of it, because of its failure uh, to, to, to protect and to serve and to deliver peace. And um, what we're seeing now in Minneapolis, the mayor of Minneapolis, and you know, there's a serious consideration there now that they're voting to disband the Minneapolis police force because it has failed and to create another force, uh, another organization that can deliver peace. And in New York, there's a discussion about disbanding the police there. And the mayor of London has announced that there will be a review of uh, a racial review of the police, of the NHS, of local government. And this is exactly what's needed because we need to we need to look at these built environment issues, but we need to also look at the bigger structural and institutional issues and realise that um, this is a moment, this is an important moment where important thinking can, can turn this situation uh, on a better course. And it's not going to be easy and you know, toppling a statue isn't going to solve the problems. Um, but it's, it, it, it gives you an indication, hopefully, and it raises the awareness to more people and shows a, direct, a direction that things could be going in. So many, many uh, big issues to discuss and hopefully um, some of that's been useful. Um, and uh, you know, do yeah, please share your thoughts and comments. Uh, the idea of this show was to try and discuss the, the big kind of images that were in the media uh, and what they mean for us right now in this time of massive change. And that's my small contribution to the debate. I hope it's been helpful. Uh, thanks for listening. Good night.